Welcome to the line. I'm Christine Williams. Coming up for discussion on our Viewpoints Hour, an unusual government ad promoting organ donation. Is it creative or creepy? The ongoing peril of Somalian pirates. And looking back in hindsight, was there any way to prevent the conquest vacation fiasco? Stay tuned. And these are the issues we're presenting today to our Viewpoints guests for commentary. A government internet ad which we'll be, sho which we'll be showing you to promote organ donation. The question we'll be addressing, is the promotion creepy or creative? The ongoing menace of Somalian pirates, they've been making millions by hijacking merchant ships. Somalia's Prime Minister has now condemned the practice of paying out ransoms and the nightmare tourists have faced with conquest vacations. It has prompted Ontario Premier McGuinty to call for a review of the Travel Industry Council of Ontario. Now let's meet our Viewpoints guests. Reverend John Williams is a political activist. He is also founder of the Canadian Children's Rights Initiative. And Paul McKeever is leader of the Freedom Party of Ontario. And you, the viewer, as always on Viewpoints Days, you are our third guest. Feel free to call in at any time with any one of your questions today. Now, usually on the first story that we present to you, it's normally an article. But the Ontario government decided to put forth a web ad advocating organ donation. Now what we're going to be doing is showing you that ad because after it we're going to be discussing the whole issue about organ donation. And the question that we're asking you, do you think the video is creative or do you think it's a bit creepy? We want to hear your thoughts on that question, but you're also welcome to call in at any time about organ donation as a whole when you listen to what our guests and I are discussing today. So if we have that video ready, let's take a look at it now. Welcome to RecycleMe.org, the place where recycling moves from our curbsides to our insides. By clicking on this handsome tattoo, you can open me up and learn the ins and outs of organ and tissue donation. The heart, the lungs, even the eyes, they're all here for you to discover. Once you've checked me out, make a pledge to make a difference. Click on the Join the Movement link and become an organ and tissue donor. I've become one to save up to eight lives, because if I'm not using them, why shouldn't someone else? And if you go over to the Stories tab, you can then click on that. Well, there you have it. And in case you wondered what else happened with that video, well, the guy just basically stands there. Just stands there. I mean, you see a bit of movement, but he'll stand there forever. Okay, so that is the video. And the question that we're asking you, do you think it's creative or do you think it's creepy. I'm going to start with you on that one, Reverend Williams. Well, you know, as a Canadian, I, I, I pretty much go with Marsha McLuhan, which is the, who said that the medium is the message. And in this case, the medium is, is um, a curious one. Um, if I understand the ad correctly in the website, it, the point is to encourage people to now allow anybody to be a, an organ donor. But there are some really serious technical problems with this website. And, and consequently, it disallows about 90% of the population from accessing it and even signing up. There are other things with a bucket full of guts in the corner. This is, <laughs> this is bad taste. I, I should be laughing at something like this. No, it's but bad taste. I think the audience knows me by now. I, I, I giggle sometimes over these absurd uh, no, issues. We know that you're sensitive and, and sensible. We know that about you. But uh, I can't really say the same about the people who designed this website. The, mm. the, the technology is too demanding for most of the computers in the country, in the province. And... Uh, well, some of it's pretty tasteless. You actually bring up some pretty good points there because you tackled it twofold, that it's insensitive, mm -hmm. having that bucket full of guts, as you put it. But on the other hand, the fact about how technical it is. Well, it, it, on my computer, uh, which is, I mean, I've got high-speed uh, Rogers, course, the whole thing, and, and a pretty good computer, and, and I, I just got a jerky kind of message and, and kind of, uh, you know, not mm -hmm. very good access. And I, I run through thousands and thousands and thousands That's of right. websites. So you know, it's obvious to me that mm -hmm. there's a problem here. Like and it. kids would look at it and laugh. Yeah, you don't think it'll garner the seriousness? It would gain their respect because it's mm -hmm. cheap. Mm -hmm. Okay, Paul, your views on this one? Well, it is creepy, 
in my view, mm -hmm. um, and it's encouraging children to think of their bodies as things that are worthless, to be left in a bin at the roadside and used by the state however the state chooses to use it. Uh, it's gory because it's leftist, because it's collectivist. Yeah, there's a morbid twist to that. Yeah, and it's, a, it's sort of this cult of death that seems to haunt everything the, the, uh, the left wants to do. They can't uh, do anything in a tasteful way, it seems, especially with these websites. But, you know, the real horror here is that the government is telling children, 14, well, and, and young adults, up to 24 years old, it's the target group for this website, that you don't have any control over your body once it's gone. That there's only two choices. One, that somebody has to go without your organs and mm -hmm. perhaps die. Or two, um, you have to... Uh, give those organs, but get no compensation at all. In other words, they would rather have someone die than allow you to charge for your or organs. For example, bequeath them to the family so that the value of those organs could be uh, used by your children or wife. Um, until choice is permitted in this province, until it's legal to set the price from zero dollars if you choose mm -hmm. or to something higher, until you're free to say who you do and do not want these organs to go to, I think it is immoral to contribute your organs, uh, because in doing so, you're allowing, you're giving the state uh, free, uh, you know, the, the power to say your freedom doesn't matter. If by refusing in this effort to give your organs until you have that choice about the price and et cetera, uh, you have managed to twist the state's arm and to change the law and allow you to have control over the price and et cetera of your organs, um, until they make that change, it's immoral in my view to be donating, do donating your organs. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, as the left... <laughs> yes, and, and I, mean, I knew you wanted to comment I, 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 I'd about I'd that I'd like one. to say a couple of things. First of all, um, at the Blue Jays game this week, and I'm not a baseball fan, really. I used to mm -hmm. play when I was a kid, but I, you know, I don't watch it or anything. But I did read in the news that a, a young lad who's 12 or 13 years old had a heart transplant, was throwing out the first ball. And, and, and I mean, organ transplant is a real part of our society and our culture and it's pretty much inescapable at this point many people's lives have been saved in this way mm -hmm. including people that I know and love and um, so I, I mean there's a place for these kinds of things and mm -hmm. I, I have to say that, that, that I do not and cannot possibly take the kind of monetary approach that, that Paul does. I mean I respect it and I understand that business is business but, but um, for me there, there's another kind of human aspect uh, where as a community, as a, not just a, a local community, but as a national and provincial community, we look to the well-being of each other. And that's, of course, why we have things like, you know, health care. And, mm -hmm. of course, I know some people don't really think that's necessary either, but I do. Uh, I think it's been a great benefit to the country. Now, there are two things I think we need to expand on here. I'm going to get to the phone lines very shortly before we even do so. And one is more on the monetary issue because mm -hmm. I know that's been raised again and again that perhaps people should be paid for organs and some go so far as to suggest it should be done because it'll un undercut the black market which I, I don't buy that aspect of it but it has been discussed as an issue of payment and on the other hand what you said about the left there are grades of left so that's something I want to bring back up because you had another example that you gave me in the green room yeah. and you said you'd mention it on air because I really want you to tell that story because it's absolutely deplorable right and I take it when you say left you perhaps mean leftist ideologues because that's quite different than how let's suppose John has you define you more you, you say you're more of a centrist but yeah. there are times you come out and you say that you're left but you're not far left yeah. and there are grades of left but I want to return to that so hold those thoughts for a moment I want to hear what you have to say on the phone lines Dr. Tom on line one go ahead hello hi Dr. Tom it's Dr. Tom speaking uh, just to put this in perspective I am a retired pathologist so I do know a little bit about the inside situation of this transplant game it seems to me that one aspect is overlooked I believe that the future of transplants lies in developing a minute heart that will fit in the chest cavity. In other words, an artificial heart. This has been done on a large scale. I think it was called Jarvik in the past. But all the propaganda, advertising and talk is about human transplantation. That takes away money and attention from developing a mechanical small heart which is, I believe, what we need. Dr. Tom, can you give us a little bit of information from your perspective as a retired pathologist on the issue of rejection? 
when it comes to these um, foreign organs? Well, I'm not an expert on this. I must qualify that right away. Um, however, um, rejection is the rejection of foreign tissue, and it's not specific, of course, to the heart. It can be there for a kidney, which is, I believe, one of the organs in which most successful transplants have occurred. But still, the organ, the transplanted organ, can be rejected by the body's immune system. We have natural antibodies and natural antibody production against this. And in the medical profession, uh, that is overcome temporarily for a period of, say, and I'm not an expert on this, about three, four weeks by giving immune suppression drugs mm -hmm. such as cortisone. Yes. Uh, I'm no expert on this. this is a very well, you're not a transplant specialist, but you are a yes. qualified medical doctor. That's Dr. Correct. Tom, very, very unique insight, and I, that approach is something. Do you think, yes, go ahead. You want to respond here? Well, I, I've actually had transplants. I, I have uh, silicon lens implants in my eyes, so I actually have something similar to what uh, Dr. Wow. Williamson is talking wow. about. Um, I have silicon lens implants mm. to re replace my um, my lenses. Because you were blind. I was blind, yes, and so I have a website now, blindmansees.com, mm -hmm. uh, which is about Canada. Uh, that's the one thing. The, the other thing is that the, uh, with the new kind of medical research, uh, just briefly, it seems that they're beginning to plan and, and attempting to grow organs. Uh, so that those are the things that could be implanted in people as need arose. Mm -hmm. Skin is being about... grown in large masses at this point, Okay, for I hear you. Yeah. I hear you. Paul? Well, I think the technology is wonderful, and I hope that mm -hmm. the people who develop these technologies will be paid for the uh, things that they're producing, the values that they're producing. Um, you know, there was a, a comment my friend made about um, the, the human side. There's nothing less human, to my mind, than telling someone... Um, that they're not allowed to deal with their body as they want to. Hmm. Uh, to my but, mind, that, that aspect of force is what takes away from the argument. Yes. And it's, it's human uh, to allow a person to live by, if they have their own money, for example, and someone wants to sell them it rather than give them it, they should be permitted. But that's a critical issue you're saying here, because I don't know if you guys have heard, but we ran a whole program, an hour on organ donation once, and in that particular program, there was, um, in fact, a guy that's, that's quoted here on, on some other story that we'll be bringing up later, and that has to do with the, um, the travel fiasco that we, we mentioned on the show. But Peter Cormos was one guest, and Frank Cleese, and they actually agreed on something, and that was the need for people to get involved in organ donation. However, and I'm not implicating any of these gentlemen at all. It was raised on a separate occasion. People have been proposing that perhaps it's time for the government to have something in place when you go to get your driver's license, for example, that you don't fill out a card that says, um, yes, you like to donate an organ, but rather, if you choose not to, you fill out a card. And that has been proposed as a very productive way of organ donations, getting the organs required to promote life. But on the other hand, it also presupposes that the state owns your organs and that you have to come forth and say, yeah. no, I don't want to give it. Is that the right way to go about this? Food for thought, because I want your opinion on this whole organ donation thing. Now, before we go for a break, I want to hear what you, Ted, have to say on line four. Hello, Ted, you're on the line. Hello, Christine. Hello, um, very interesting topic. Um, I really don't see that this is a left or right issue. That really confuses me. I thought the ad was good if it gets people to talk about the issue. It's important that we discuss it and, and come to terms with it. And I find it extremely grotesque whenever we start talking about a person must be able to benefit from donating their organs. That, I think, is disgusting. Well, Ted, I'm glad you called in with your opinions because what you're saying there is precisely what we're going to return and talk about. Don't go away. We'll be back after this. Hello again and welcome back to Viewpoints on the Line. Continuing to talk about our first subject. Now, we're referring to an ad 
put out by the Ontario government and the intent of this ad is to promote organ donations. But the question that we're addressing here, is it really an effective means to do so? Is it really creative or is it more creepy? And what we're going to do, because we heard from Ted, and we want to talk more about it because we've also heard from our guests and we have a little bit of dissension here on, on certain notions. We'll return to that in a moment. But in case you tuned in after the video, what we're going to do is that we're going to show you that video again. So let's see it now. Welcome to RecycleMe.org, the place where recycling moves from our curbsides to our insides. By clicking on this handsome tattoo, you can open me up and learn the ins and outs of organ and tissue donation. The heart, the lungs, even the eyes, they're all here for you to discover. Once you've checked me out, make a pledge to make a difference. Click on the Join the Movement link and become an organ and tissue donor. I've become one to save up to eight lives, because if I'm not using them, why shouldn't someone else? And the fellow that you saw on that screen, well, he'll stand there forever once again. But the two of you are in agreement that it, it falls under the creepy category because that little bucket you saw on the right-hand side of your screen full, filled with yeah, organs. And the logo bleeds. Uh, you know, it, it couldn't just be a clean thing. They had to have a, a recycle symbol that literally makes blood. Now, here's my criticism. It, it just makes the human body look like a, some commodity. Okay, that, that's on one hand. But on the other hand, you were talking about being able to charge money, and Ted found that was, in his words, grotesque. It, it wasn't, if that's the word that you used. Offensive. Offensive. He found, yes. Uh, you reply to that? Yeah. It's not, uh, he, Ted may have misunderstood what I meant. It's not that a person must be required to, to sell. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just that we have to remember in all of this that your organs are not garbage by the side of the road in a recycle bin, as they want us to all believe they are. They have value. They have value to you when you're alive, and they are a value to those... Now, I'm going to play the other side for a moment, because I want to be clear here. I, I don't agree with that strategy. I don't agree with it at all. Yeah. And, but I know that there are those that are going to argue, and this has been the basis. While you're dead anyway, it's going to rot. It's going to go by the wayside. The worms are going to get it. So why not just let it be useful to somebody else to promote life? And that is the argument here. It's going to end up on a beach in Somalia. Oh, good. Well, it'll be, whether, whether they're used or not is a separate issue from um, who controls their use. And that's all I'm saying, that when the state says, look, if you want to, to use your organs to save someone's life, you have to do it on our terms. That's what's wrong. And, mm -hmm. and, and until that changes, yes. then uh, I think it's not right to play their game. You said a law passed in Ontario recently. Yeah, there, there was a law passed. Tell us what that was. And I want your feedback too, Reverend Williams, because I'm not sure that was widely publicized. Yeah, I don't think it was. It was just this past December. Mm -hmm. Um, effectively, the Trillium uh, Network, for organ the, the, the organization that yes. uh, you, you would register your intentions if you did want to donate your organs, now, uh, as of December, no longer can you register the fact that you do not consent. And the effect of this is that there's nothing on record with them if you should die, for, for example, in an accident or be incapacitated and unable to communicate your wishes. There's nothing there saying, I don't want you to, to use my organs. This is, in my uh, way of thinking, this is uh, the left again saying, aha, wow. now we've got a, a, a way to disentitle people, uh, to take away their power to control what happens with their bodies. Hmm. And it effectively leaves it to the family then. So they get a second kick at the can. The, the government then can put the pressure on the family to say, you know, shouldn't we use these organs? Shouldn't you donate them? when the focus should really be on allowing people to control the fate of their own body. Now, I, I'd be curious how many people really knew that that law was passed. Did you know about it, John? I did, yeah, Because yeah. a lot of people didn't. I'll tell you, I don't think automatically why. Yet, it no. hasn't passed final reading? No, I don't believe so. I, I thought it had. Well, as of, as of Because December, I'll tell you, any, any news in December could have gotten lost simply because Christmas. we were faced of a, an eco Christmas, an economic free fall, and a coalition. Yeah. So it got lost. But it's frightening if such laws are being passed and people don't know about it. John, you wanted to comment. Well, I was going to say just in response to what Paul said, that, that for me, as a person more on the left, the kind of definition, description that he used to, you know, the, the, the taking away of choices and that sort of thing, r reminds me more of a right-wing perspective. It depends, I suppose, how far right you go. But, you know, like, you know, Nazism, extremism uh, uh, on one end. Uh, uh, extremism, I, I guess, in any, in any direction can be troubling. Now, we, we expect our government and the agencies of our government to have scrutiny, oversight, and control of, of other bodily things like blood. You know, our, our blood supply are scrutinized. And, oh, yes. And... and we don't force people to give blood either, mm -hmm. of course, and it's an, an integral, important part of our, our, our system. 
Um, but I, I do find it troubling, as you do, that, that there would be a compulsion to give, that, that unless you said otherwise, they would harvest you, you know. Yeah. And, and of course, that come, brings in other kinds of problems, like, you know, should we let this person die or should we, you know, should harvest their... Should a person their, feel uh, pressured yeah. to give organs? Well, this is, this is the thing. It, it goes even beyond that. The left-right thing is, it, more, more precisely, collectivism versus individualism. In other words, do you have a right to live for your own life, to value your own life, put your own life first and your own happiness first, or is your duty simply to be something that's sacrificed to the, the whole? And these laws fall into the latter mm -hmm. category. You're to sacrifice, not to profit. You're to sacrifice, you're not to control the fate of your own uh, it's for the global uh, group to determine what happens with you after you're dead. You cease to have any power. It's, it's completely collectivist. Uh, now, but, but the thing about this uh, is, we were, you were talking about the website earlier, this collectivism always to dehumanize people, to de-individualize them. They, it's, it's like a cult of death no matter what they're trying to do. And you have sell. an example to give that yeah, you there want was, to. There was yes. a website and here they are trying to convince you that they're really concerned about CO2 levels. And so what do they do? They want, they're, they're actually concerned. They don't want people having technology that not everybody has. They don't like cars. They don't like uh, wealth. It's a war on um, an inequality of wealth. So what they attack CO2, and what do they do? They have you take a test as a child. And so it's geared toward children. Geared so toward who, children. Uh, mm -hmm. school what children. age group? I think it was ages uh, 9 to 15 or okay. something. It was in Australia. High school, yes. And they ask, you know, does your family use a car? that puts you into more of a pig category. They've got three little pigs, and you're the pig on the right, and it gets bigger and bigger the more you <laughs> produce. If you, if you cook your food, well, then you're producing CO2, and et cetera. And at, at the end of the questions, you get this huge pig, if you're at, like any North American, with fangs and hair and et cetera. And then it says, push the button to see how long you should live. Oh, goodness. You click the button, the pig explodes into a pile of brains, eyeballs, hair, blood, mucus, pus. And at the bottom it says, you should die at age two. Oh, goodness. Um, t so that you don't use more than your share of the Earth's resources oh, and CO2. Oh, my goodness. That is terrifying. It, now, now, I'm curious what you're going to say, Reverend Williams. You know why? Because you are a strong support of supporter of environmentalism. And but children. what do you think? And children. Yeah. So you're, you're, you're kind of doubling them up there. But what do you think of that strategy? Well, I think that children, because of their twisted sense of humor, would, would laugh at it. But I think it's, it's morbid, and I think it's, it's offensive, and uh, it, it doesn't appeal to me. Another part of my life is that I've had, I've had a lot to do with death. Uh, I mean, mm -hmm. I, I performed hundreds and hundreds of funerals and, yes. you know, and been around death and dying and, and all that a lot. Um, and I mean, I'm not troubled by that, but I do recognize that, that we have already monetized a lot of that. We monetize our, our care. We monetize the mm -hmm. funeral processes. We monetize everything. And, and in the process, we you know, constantly destroy the earth. Um, I, I have concerns around us doing these horrible things to one another. I agree with you about respect for human, humanity and, and individuality. You know, as a Christian and as a democratic thinker and, and, and citizen, I believe that my individuality and yours and all of ours is critical. If we don't, if we don't respect and, 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 and maintain it for all of us, then, then we all lose. This is, a, the, I guess, the best way mm -hmm. to think about it. And, and, I think that, that it's important that we continue to give people choices. Mm -hmm. I, I agree with Paul in this matter. I, I'm not, I, I'm not a, as much of a business-minded person, perhaps, as I should be, you know, but I have a different calling in life. So mm -hmm. I, I, you, you know, know what? It's fair. It should be about choice, and people shouldn't be feeling pressured. Let's go now yeah. to Sarah on line four. Hi, Sarah. You're on the line. Hello. How are you? Fine. Thank you. Um, first of all, I want to thank you for this particular uh, uh, issue this, today. Um, I have uh, a card that I signed when I want to renew my health card, and I had said, yes, I would be a, a donor owner. Um, I mean, God forbid, wherever I go, I'm not going to need them, so anybody that were to need them, uh, by all means. Um, the comment, as far as money, and I'm not stating that the, your guest has said yes, that, you know, it should be uh, uh, paid for, but I, to me, that's like a personal issue, and if you feel that, you know, you want to, you should be able to, but as far as the money issue, I, I find very offensive. Mm -hmm. Yes, go yes. ahead. Uh, you John? Know, I, Sarah, I, I, thank you for calling in. I understand that, Sarah. My wife has a, a cornea disease, and, and she's going to require cornea transplants. Mm. Uh, the government has just taken that out of whole hip, her, that particular kind of transplant. Wow. And, and we certainly, you know, we, it's hard to come up with $100,000 for, for no a surgery. No kidding. And, and, and to find, you know, to find the, the money to buy those, those necessary, you know, body parts. I mean, 
we are a compassionate society. I think that, you know, we are a just society and compassionate. And whether left or right, within the spectrum of Canadian belief and practice and doctrine, I think that there is a strong element of compassion. And we want to prosper financially. We want, we want all of us to prosper financially. But we also want good health. We want justice. Yes. We want fairness. We want reasonableness. We want inclusivity. You know, that, so that everybody's human. Everybody's a part of the mix. You know, whether from from childhood mm -hmm. to old age, everybody should be important. Okay, and we're going to have to go for a break on that. Now, when we come back, we're going to go along to the second subject matter because we've got two more very important issues we're going to be addressing, so don't go away. We'll return.